time, so don't cry One day all seven will die Alright kids, so I've been wanting to do a Prince dedicated video for a while since his passing, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to talk about because I have known a lot about Prince, but I'm also learning so much more about him, and he's so much more than the music, and the music is so much already, that I didn't know what I wanted to talk about. Um, so I did some research, and I've been reading a lot about him, and also I didn't want to jump to conclusions and on the bandwagon of, you know, everybody assuming how he passed away, because uh, none of that really lines up with stuff that I believe, so I wanted us to discuss some things that maybe not a lot of other outlets and resources are talking about. Um, but to take into consideration uh, right out the gate is the fact that not every artist who dies is addicted to drugs. Like, that's the number one go-to that people love to assume an artist OD'd on something or whatever. The next is also always a fatal illness. And both have been projected about this man, and it's just kind of disgusting to not only watch it be released into the media as fodder, and we are supposed to just believe it without any truth or facts or validity behind it, and then on the other hand, you also have them releasing... Uh, hinting at he had uh, full-blown AIDS, which both of those I absolutely do not believe. I don't believe he was addicted to medication. I don't believe any of that. Now, could I be wrong? Absolutely. But I'm talking about what I believe out the gate. And just from watching his career, the whole time, the whole time he's been famous, he has been fighting for control of his art. That is what his entire career has been about. He has not been lazy. He has copyrighted all of his music. Therefore, it has to be licensed through him. So during the 90s, when he was going through a majority of the legal battles, he was in fights with Warner Brothers to have full control over his art. They were distributing it. He didn't like that. And this was in the era of vinyl. Can you imagine what artists go through now with streaming? I mean, this is a big deal and it's a huge topic. Uh, shout out to Jay-Z starting title. That is what more people need to do. Maybe that's not the service you want to purchase. However, that is giving more control back to the artist. I don't know if many of you know this, but Spotify and iTunes and a lot of streaming services strip a contract uh, to be one-sided. Therefore, the artist doesn't receive royalties. That's a really big problem when you're buying the album on iTunes to support the artist and the artist isn't seeing royalties from that album. Like, that's not good. Um, so you're basically buying an album to help support the CEO of a record company who wants to reimburse the use of his own private jet. Like, that you know, the CEOs get luxury, you know, the record producers get luxury. These are all white men, and, you know, a small minority are the producers you hear of, the Diddy's, the Jay-Z's, the, you know, the independent artists who are creating labels and production companies for themselves. There's, you know, a good dozen or so out there, but that doesn't compare to the hundreds of white men who own these companies, and they refuse to play a game with the artists, so it's like, Art is really going to die if we don't have strong, famous artists stand up for the quality and integrity of work that we the people should be demanding. I mean, we're so used to this factory bubblegum bullshit that we just allow it to be acceptable, but we need artists to stand for something. We don't need radio time filled. We have plenty of old music for that. Like, fuck yourself if you just want to hear a new current song every month by an artist, whatever. Like, that's stupidity. We need music, and we need art art. Art of all mediums, we need it to speak to us and to help us, this young generation, speak out against the atrocities the future generations will face and that past generations have struggled through. And it's like we're choosing to allow culture to not exist in America, especially America here, because I think it's greed and it's corruption and it's money and we're all being dumbed down. Anyway, I've talked about that in in past videos, but I did want to speak on this because Prince was dominantly uh, known for being hard to work with via fighting for control of ownership. And I think this is so important for all artists, comedians, uh, 
poets, um, painters, musicians, every medium of, of art needs to start having an outlet for people who really are creating this from their soul. It's not about monetization. Like this, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but on my YouTube page, right now, I mean, it, it seems in, insignificant, uh, but I'm hoping this grows, and I've kept it monetary free. I don't want ads on my site. I'm choosing not to allow people to advertise. I'm choosing to not put in commercial breaks. Like, I don't want that stuff, because these videos are to have conversations with kids my age, younger, older, whatever, who's ever in a like-minded state and wants to talk about real shit. Like, I don't want to get caught up in a newspaper tabloid claiming that Prince OD'd on opiates, so he had to be rushed to the hospital for a save shot. Like, I don't believe that. I don't think that happened, and I don't think he's fighting AIDS. I don't think that was at all, um, I don't think that was at all the problem. I think the problem was he was garnishing a lot of power. In 2014, he finally, uh, settled with Warner Brothers Music and gained full control of his catalog of music. I'm not sure if people know how huge that is. That's a huge win for the, the artist in the music industry. And just a year and a half later, he's taken out. Like, There's a lot of things that speak and attest to the fact that I think Prince was uh, taken out in some way. I don't know how. I'm, I don't like or appreciate the word conspiracy theorist because uh, people use it wrong. Nobody understands that a conspiracy is is a, a person or group of people conspiring to do something, and a theory is a thought of action on it. So a conspiracy theory is actually um, something we should all be promoting. We should all be uh, theorizing on somebody conspiring to do something. And like the air of mystery around that, I'm I'm so baffled when people use conspiracy to put people down. But um, I do think that somebody went after Prince. I think he was very powerful. He had a huge influence. Um, he was a Jehovah's Witness. He stayed away from drugs. He didn't lead a dangerous lifestyle. And I think that's why so many of his fans refuse to believe the stories of drugs and HIV and AIDS. It's just not, uh, it's not computable with the actions and the lifestyle he led. He was very secretive, but not in the way that he was doing shady down low things and hiding them. He was working really hard for the people and the work that he was contributing, especially to black America, uh, needed to be underground because it would be disruptive or disrupted if it was known. He was performing concerts that were actually just a veil of secrecy to help give back and, um, promote the struggles within the black community. He was he was inside doing concerts for uh, things like Black Lives Matter, like anything uh, black culture centric in this country he was trying to reach out to. I know some of his friends have been doing interviews and speaking out for him and uh, Tavis, who is also a, a friend to the Wendy show, he is a straight shooter and he was saying, you know, with Prince being a Jehovah's Witness, he can't praise himself for his contributions to the world and to society. He can't talk on that stuff. And, you know, people like to focus. Jehovah's Witnesses don't take medicine for illness and stuff, but that's not what killed him. He was young and he was active and he was healthy. A flu wouldn't take him out. And he didn't have HIV AIDS, a toxicology that isn't uh, altered would show that, but I mean, this is again control and power. His whole life, his whole career was spent fighting for control and power. And I know we like to laugh this off like, oh, conspiracy theorists, but for real, if you think about it, when you're up against corporations, Warner Brother is a corporation, they feed and funnel you music and media daily. This is a corporation he was fighting, a multi billion dollar corp. And they would want to tarnish his image because he tarnished theirs. So I do believe there were a lot of secret battles he was fighting. I do believe that we, the public, don't know much of his career. I don't think we um, speak out much about in the 90s why he changed his name from Prince to the symbol. Like, people always made fun of him for it, but nobody really took into consideration that just because he didn't speak on the realness of that issue didn't mean something real was happening. Warner Brothers was in court battles fighting for his name. They owned 
the name Prince. They copyrighted the name Prince. He didn't own his legal name, his birth name. So he changed it to the symbol, which is a male-female symbol with a trumpet flowing through it. And he called it the love symbol. And he said it came to him through a time of meditation. And it's been involved in his music throughout. And it only became the symbol for his name when he was stripped of his name. And he said that in an interview when he was candidly speaking on the trials and tribulations he was dealing with, he said he did not want another uh, name given to him. Prince was his birth name given by his mother, so he didn't want to choose another common name, so he went with the love symbol, and that's what he called it, but he said it's unaudible. You can't pronounce it because it is a symbol, so then people started calling him the artist formerly known as Prince, um, other things like this happened with him, and these were the things that Prince made sure to do in his career. He copyrighted his songs. He knew that that was important. Why do you think that some of the legendary music artists of our time go down in uh, Hall of Fames and being known as some of the best? It's because they own their art. They're true artists. They're not these bubblegum pop princesses like Britney Spears and Christina and Taylor Swift and Nicki Minaj and all these factory bullshit who sign you know, their creative rights away to companies just to bring in millions. All they want is money, but they're selling their voice. They're selling their image. It's all dirty. It's tainted now. Like, if you idolize people like that, you're idolizing an industry that uses people as slaves. And that's why, again, Prince stood out against the industry and in 1996 would perform large music venues with the word slave written on his face because he was performing for a corporation to make them money. He wasn't performing for the love of his art. It wasn't his anymore. They stole it from him. So he was going into court fighting for this constantly. And finally in 2014, he won it. And I think Warner Brothers had beef. I mean, other artists who keep their work, Michael Jackson owned his work. He also sneakily stole the Beatles work. I think Paul McCartney finally does own that again. I'm not sure. But many artists do this. I'd, I'm not sure if people know, but I do believe the Michael Jackson estate also owns the Taylor Swift uh, catalog. So I think Taylor Swift's music is owned by Michael Jackson's estate which I'm not sure who is the conservator over that, but I'm just picturing, like, his daughter. I forget her name, but she's gorgeous. Uh, but she could literally, like, tweet Taylor Swift and be like, come play my birthday party. And if Taylor's like, nah, I'm good, she's like, you're gonna play my birthday party. I own your music. Like, I, that's a lot of power. You know what I mean? And Michael Jackson was conniving. He was BFF with uh, Paul McCartney, and he bought the Beatles catalog under Paul McCartney's like knows like it, people do this it gets villainous michael jackson was a good man but you know you could argue that so was john lennon and paul mccartney of the beatles so why were they doing that to each other and you know people get villainous for money so when you take into consideration that prince wanted to make sure he had control of the message and the art he was getting across doesn't that make you wonder did he really not have a will and here's where i get dicey i get real 50 50 because Part of me thinks, yeah, maybe he didn't have a will. Maybe he knew that when you leave this earthly realm, you can't take your possessions with you. And that's all they are. They're possessions. And why why worry? Why write down a will that makes you think, oh, when I go into the next realm, when I go into a higher dimension, when I enter the seventh chakra, however you want to look at it, whenever you die, uh, why take that worldly possession mentality with you? Leave it you're done. You're done with it. Leave it. You know, there's also the contestion. Maybe he didn't have a written will, but maybe he also wasn't sick and was taken out prematurely and had no idea this was coming. Maybe he would have written one. I don't really buy that. I think he was very in control of his career, knew what he was doing. The only other theory I really think is maybe he did have one, but it had a lot of power in it. He controlled multi hundreds of millions of dollars worth of music and art and his estate would be going into you know the hands of not wealthy people so it's just I'm, I'm curious was the music industry fighting to make sure the will wasn't heard of now that's a stretch i'm not saying that's what it is but i could plausibly agree that if evidence was found to support that 
that would make sense to me because he was a secret person and he was fighting a lot of fights we don't know about all we know is his music we don't know the struggles he we i mean they were talking about how when lauren hill was sent to jail he was worried about her kids and calling people up to make sure her kids were okay there was an interview that tavis did where he talked about how prince went down to new orleans during katrina and uh he was veiling the secrecy of concerts with making sure that people had shelter and safety and money and a means to survive and i just i believe he was a really good person and that's bottom line and i think we can all agree on that no matter what kind of fan you were of prince if you just liked his music or if you just liked the movie purple rain that's cool too i'm from minneapolis first ave was 10 blocks from my apartment i used to see the prince star all the time like it's really cool knowing that the weeks prior to his death he was in his hometown minneapolis and he was seen at the electric fetus i lived across the street from the electric fetus when i lived in minneapolis i'm so you know envious of people running into him there i just think it would have been fabulous to have a conversation with him or just be in his presence and that energy and uh he had a party in his uh, Chan Hassan compound, the, I forget, Paisley Park is where, uh, he lived and he was discovered, but he had a compound in Chan Hassan and my boyfriend, uh, grew up a block from it. Like, literally, he was Prince's neighbor in the Chan Hassan community and his father lived there and it had this long gate. I have a photo of me in front of the Prince gate. It's insane. Like, Prince was a real cool guy and, it's too bad he's gone, but I'm learning so much more about him and his message and his art now that he's gone, and that pains me to say, because when he passed, it affected me weird, because I was like, why do I why do I care? I wasn't a huge fan of his. I loved his music in the 90s, and, you know, it just kind of faded out of the scene with him not being on iTunes and staying relevant to my social media aware mind, but I'm really glad he did that, because it makes you have to hunt for that treasure you know like if you want that good art if you want to put on his catalog of music on a sunday you have to you know get title and purchase it or you have to go to a record store and flip through for the vinyl like you have to egg hunt for that shit and i think it makes it so much worth while like i was thinking about it how shitty is it that you could just click on the googler and say mona lisa and you can have it you can see it you could print it out you could print it out on really high quality paper and frame it and you could tell people you have a, a cloned copy like I, I mean honestly it's just taken out the quality and the the triumph of the art that we have it with such easily access and it would just be cool if we fought to have real art in our lives again in a way like if we had to work hard to get it and you know i was reading articles about him that just talked about how people in this day and age need to look at prince as just a trendsetter in a way of how we need to take control of our art whatever kind of medium you put out there copyright it trademark it make sure you have a distinct uh ownership of it and don't let people push you around don't sign contracts just for money like i get that the money and the luxury is such a desire among many and i understand why you would want it it sucks to be stuck in the struggle however just know that getting money you're still stuck you're still chained you're still a slave like you just have to realize you're a different kind and honestly that's the main point i'm taking away from the message i'm getting with prince's passing and i think that's the message i'm also trying to uh pursue in my own career and push onto others you don't need to be a slave to wage labor you don't have to be stuck at a nine to five for the rest of your life that doesn't have to be your life you can choose to not uh chase the dollar and not solely surround your mind with thoughts of money and success in, in a monetized sense like there's other ways to achieve success is all i'm saying and i think it's really cool that we have influences like prince and i think it's really cool that he left a mark on this world that wasn't just about an artist trying to chase the dollar. He actually stood for something, and he will be known for that. You know, maybe give it a generation or two. Let's weed through the ickiness, but we'll get through the truth behind this great man. And, you know, others like him. It is strange that during his passing, uh, we lost a very effeminate man, Prince, but another effeminate man, Bowie, and another masculine woman, China. And I just think that's really interesting, this androgyny, transgendered um, mindset we're all discovering within humanity during this time, uh, but also with them passing. It's like, what is that? You know, is that weird? Is that something 
relatable. I just, I'm not trying to say it is, I'm just curious, and that has me wondering, like, what do you think? So I want to bring it up. But, you know, just interesting stuff like that. Do you think something is going on behind the scenes? Do you think these three people of influence and androgyny and uh, sexual prowess and power, do you think something happened to them, or was it just coincidental? And, you know, what is your view of Prince? Did you just know him for the music, or did you know him for the message? And do you care about artists giving that message? Do you care about an artist standing up for the values that we society should have? Because I do. I think comedians especially should be pushing us forward and breaking ground, and I think that's why it's so important to not censor a comedian. You need to allow them to creatively explore these taboo subjects, and I think that's really important. So, I want to end this on that note and uh, hear what you have to say about Prince. I think that his career will leave a mark on the music industry forever. My favorite Prince song is what I brought this video into, Seven, and I think the message behind it is just so powerful. I think it stands for your chakras, and I think it stands for the seven sins. We're going to watch all seven fall. You know, greed, lust, envy, pride, gluttony, all of that stuff, it's going to fade away. And we're going to stand here and still be human. We can fight our egos, and all seven will fall. And there's a really cool line in that song where he talks about all seven falling. And no matter what, in 12 cycles, we'll, you and me will be back here again. To me, that stands for the 12 astrological signs, the cycles, and uh, going through the Kali Yuga. And look all of this stuff up. It's really interesting. But uh, during this transition into the age of Aquarius, and now Aquarians are... The powerhouse, I think this is really interesting. Maybe in the next cycle, when we enter the age of Aquarius again, here in this dimension that we're on this plane, maybe we will be back here. What if we are? What if we did this 12 cycles ago? What if we're just picking up like a continuation point in a movie or something, a sequel, if you will? Interesting, really mind-blowing stuff. You can think I'm cuckoo bananas, you can think I'm crazy, a weed smoke and pothead hippie, that's totally fine. I think that many people are starting to wake up to thoughts like this, and with people like Prince, prominent voices in the industry, speaking to stuff like this, it's going to be something that's common culture pretty soon, and that's exciting. Anyway, take care of yourself today. I hope you're having a great Friday, and the weather here on the West Coast is supposed to be spectacular this weekend. I plan on being at the beach. Hope you are as well. Take care of yourself. Listen to a lot of Prince. Peace.